In the last few, we went through the geologic history of Death Valley, specifically how it went from being submerged in the warm, shallow sea to the arid desert that it is today. We left off here in Badwater Basin, the lowest, hottest place in North America, where the conditions are seemingly inhospitable to life. But if you look closely enough, you find that the valley is actually full of life, microbial life. There are microbes called extremophiles that thrive in salty, alkaline environments like Badwater Basin. Although extremophiles might be kind of a misnomer because to these microbes, the conditions here are not extreme at all. They're actually quite favorable. And the coolest part about these microbes is the implications they hold for searching for extraterrestrial life. In planetary science, we're always looking for environments on Earth that are similar to those on other planets and moons that we think might have life. For example, there's organisms that live in ice-covered lakes in Antarctica that are studied because this environment is potentially similar to that of ice-covered ocean worlds like Europa. Likewise, deep-sea hydrothermal vent ecosystems are studied because these environments may be present on potentially tectonically active worlds like Enceladus. And given its extremely dry climate, barren landscape, and lack of vegetation, Death Valley is often used as a Mars analog. And you may be thinking, okay, so microbes can survive here, but it's probably just barely, right? They probably nearly die every summer when the surface temperatures in the salt flats reach over 200 degrees Fahrenheit or 90 degrees Celsius, right? But actually, the microbes here don't just survive, they thrive, and they do even better in the summer. Essentially, whenever the conditions get less comfortable for us, the more comfortable these microbes are. But finding microbes among the salt flats here isn't our only way to look for life here. We can actually use the minerals themselves to look for indicators of life inside their composition. In my recent video about White Sands National Park, I talked about how evaporite minerals or salt deposits form in basins where lakes have dried up because these salt minerals precipitate out of solution or form solids as the water evaporates. And this is why they're called evaporites. The evaporites here in Death Valley formed as vast lake systems that covered the region during the Pleistocene Ice Age dried up over the last several thousand years. So from the occurrence of evaporites on Earth, we learn that liquid water at the planet's surface is necessary to form these minerals. Therefore, when Mars rovers discovered evaporite minerals on the red planet, it became clear that there was once water at Mars's surface which could have been inhabited by life. But it's not just evidence for water that these minerals hold. The evaporites deposited in White Sands and here in Death Valley also hold indicators for the presence of life in their chemical composition and physical structures. This is possible because microbes that lived in these lakes before they dried up produced many of these salt ions as their metabolic byproducts, imprinting in them chemical signatures that can be traced back to those microbes. In Death Valley, there is even evidence that microbes alter the physical structure of the evaporite minerals, providing another way for us to track the presence of life. And I will link below in the description box some references where you can read more about this research. So if there was life in ancient lakes or oceans on the surface of Mars, traces of it might be locked in the evaporite minerals that have been left behind. This is why these evaporite deposits on Mars are of interest. In fact, they're included in some of the planned return samples from Mars so that we can analyze them when they get back to Earth to see if they hold any potential signatures for life. But they aren't the only minerals that might indicate the presence of past water and life on Mars. There are also other minerals, like clay minerals, that might help us study this as well. And I actually just made a recent video about this. If it's out by now, I'll link it down below.
If you are interested in coming out to Death Valley and want to understand what you are looking at as you drive through, I highly recommend the Roadside Geology and Geology Underfoot books for this region. We were constantly looking through these books for help. They are just so useful with such great figures that match exactly what you see in person. Anyway, these will be linked below as well. Oh, okay. That's going to be a good outtake. <laughs> ah! <laughs> okay, go! Oh you gosh. can get it! <laughs> the papers that flew away. That was like instantaneous. I literally turned around and they were just down the road. Cam, what did you just notice about the hotel room? Take a closer look at the carpet here, right? <laughs> you know what type of landscape that looks like? A horsed and grobbin. <laughs> we knew we were coming. <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. Oh, it's so look hard. These. There's like little, like, almost like hair looking things. Oh, wow! That is good! <laughs> 